This is part one of a two-part video, so make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss the second episode. All right, we have former Purdue Boilermaker Rafael Davis joining the show. He won the 2015 Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year and now works for Big Tech Network as an analyst, uh, a college basketball analyst. Rafael, welcome to the show, and how are you doing today? What's up, Matt? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, let's take it back to your college days real quick before we talk some current Purdue and uh, Big Ten hoops. But uh, going all the way back to high school, why did you choose Purdue out of high school? Uh, I mean, I would say I chose Purdue going into high school just because um, I committed so early. I committed as a freshman. But um, Paint was young. Purdue was still growing under him. Um, Etwine and Lou Jack and those dudes were still young. And Baby Boilers was thriving and campus was rocking. But, I mean, recruiting started a little early for me. So it was a lot to do with my parents. And they trusted Coach Paint. They trusted with um, – what he wanted to do with the program, and it just was a, um, it was a good fit early on. And then um, through high school, coach stayed loyal to me. Uh, nothing ever changed. He stayed himself, and they won a lot of games. And it always just made sense to stay at home and stay in Indiana. Well, well so if you, you committed as a freshman in high school, something tells me that you were kind of an early bloomer. Um, am I correct in saying that? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say I was I was a six two six three as a freshman. Um, I mean, I scored a lot of points. I think my first high school varsity game as a freshman, I think I had a triple double or something like that. So I played with a lot of good talent in the state. Sure. So I was seen really early. I mean, our, our AAU teams were always loaded. So all, all of the all of the guys in my class, I came up in probably one of the I like to call it. I mean. Not even just me, I will call it the best class probably in Indiana history. So all the guys seem to be starting to get offered around that freshman year. Sure. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh so like here, I see what what how old were you when you got your first dunk? First dunk? Um 13? 13. Seventh wow. grade, seventh grade warm-up lines, first warm-up line of the season. I had on my that's crazy. I still know the shoes I had on my orange and uh, white. Jordan retro eights, yeah, yeah, yep. In seventh grade, you, you, you know, it's like you'll be dunking, and then the other team will be starting like a four foot eleven point guard. <laughs> right, just, yeah. you know, that one dunk, just one dunk and warm up line can demoralize a whole middle school team. So, yeah, exactly, cool. exactly. I've been so, on both uh, sides of that. Sure, but um, yeah. So uh, you earned minutes right away in college. You had a role on each Purdue team you played on. Uh, what was your favorite year, favorite season at Purdue? Uh, favorite year would be my junior year. Uh, That's probably our best year as a team, as a program. While I was there, uh, we wasn't ex we weren't expected to do a lot. We had just came in last place in the Big Ten, and so I always like to tell people nowadays. I mean, just thinking of just think of Minnesota finishing yeah. with a double finishing with a double bye next season. That was kind of exactly what we did. We were bottom of the Big Ten, and we finished mm -hmm. with a double bye, tied for third in the league my junior year. And I went from being one of the worst defenders to ever come through Purdue to win a defensive player of the year. So that was a big win. That was a big moment my junior year because we also had a lot of guys. We had guys graduate, obviously, but then we had a couple guys transfer for better. And um, we ended up winning. We ended up going back to the tournament. The guys that transferred did not go to the tournament. So, I mean, just the, it was an all-around win. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I remember that team really well. Uh, and I, I remember the NCAA tournament in particular, you know, people were saying that you guys the with the size you had down low could, could match up well with Kentucky. Hypothetically, yeah. you guys get past Cincinnati. How does that Kentucky game go? No, I think, I think a lot of our guys look past Cincinnati, too. I mean, I think um, – I mean, you look at that game against Cincinnati, I think we're up like seven with a minute to go or something like that. So we feel like we should have won that game, could have, would have, should have. But I think a lot of guys, naturally, you look over that first game and you look towards Cincinnati. I mean, towards Kentucky. And I'm yeah. sure some of the Kentucky guys, I mean, I'm sure some of the Cincinnati guys looked over us and looked towards Kentucky. But I think it would have matched up well. I mean, we... um. Myself and A.J. Hammonds, we grew up playing with Trey Lyles. He was on our AAU team. 
Okay. Um, I probably would have. I probably would have maybe checked him. They they started a really big lineup. I mean, yeah. You go AJ. You I would give AJ and Willie Cauley Stein. That was a bit a good battle. Vince Edwards maybe struggled with um Carl Anthony Towns, or maybe I guard Carl Anthony Towns, and then you put Vince on Trey Lyles. But I think um. I think it, I think that would have been a good game. I think AJ was that good, where AJ Hammonds was one of the um, one of the best players in the country that never really never really got the credit to be, never really put up the numbers to be, I guess. But when it came time to playing in those big games against good competition, yeah. I think he would have rose to that level. And I think defensively 100%. that year, defensively that year, we always had a chance. We had a chance against anybody defensively that year. It'd have been about making shots. Yeah, and. Uh... Yeah, was that your 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 proudest moment as a Boilermaker was making that NCAA tournament after two years of not making it? And, you know, I believe you guys played in, like, the CBI your freshman year. Was that your proudest moment, kind of getting Purdue back on track? Um, No, nah, man. My proudest my – pr- if I say my proudest moment, uh, my proudest moment will be um, graduating with my daughter. Um, oh. I had a daughter my sophomore year in college. Well, she was actually born – my freshman year. So I had a daughter my freshman year in college. Well, no, my daughter was born my my daughter was born my sophomore year in college. So in the freshman year in college, I know I'm having a daughter. She's born my December of my sophomore year and to go sophomore junior year, she's on campus with me. Senior year, she's on campus with me. She's going to games. She's seeing what a college's life is like at two years old and then yeah. for her to graduate with me and still have those pictures and whatnot, that was probably my proudest moment carrying her on senior night doing my speech was another proud moment but then also um i would say beating iu at home beating iu at home in the way we did my junior year it was um it was a really good moment because we had beaten them my sophomore year we had beaten my sophomore year we came last place in the big 10 so it didn't matter but when we swept them when we swept iu my junior year we beat them that second time at home it really felt like the program had just turned around, and I don't think it. Um, I don't think it was a tournament because we knew we were going to the tournament. I think it was um, that IU game. I think it was the Ohio State game at home. It was just little games where you just kind of felt the tide start to turn in the gym, sure. and the fans start to believe, and you got to see Vince and those guys kind of grow up. So I think because um, that that year, that year we. Um, our non-conference was bad. We lost, I mean, four games in a row. It was North Florida. I'm not in order, but it was North Florida, Vanderbilt, uh, Notre Dame, and um, Gardner Webb going into the conference play. So we were slated to have another rough year, and then we came sure. out and we played well. So that non- that Big Ten season was special. Oh, absolutely. And, and and Purdue really has been rolling every year since then. I, I think maybe one year where they didn't make the tournament. So, yeah, you guys kind of got Purdue – Back on track, um, but you, would you say that fourteen fifteen squad? Would you say that was better than your fifteen sixteen squad or your senior year squad? Or which which team do you think was better? I would say we were better. Yeah, I would say we um we were better on that team. I think I think uh, just out of pure ignorance, just out of pure nothing to lose. I mean, we had we played we had played four freshmen. Um, none of the guy except AJ really came back demanding minutes even AJ wasn't the guy as a saw as our sophomore years Tyrone Johnson was so he stepped into a new role I would say that year we really just played hard we played hard nobody had any expectations for us and all of that that next year we came into the season ranked uh, Biggie was the All-American and whatnot and I think that year on paper we might have been better Ryan Klein or whatnot but the offense we struggled to adapt to a too big lineup and it really bogged us down. And I think um, even if you go to that, the year, the next year after we leave, you go to the 16, 17 year paint went away from the too big lineup. He started the season with Isaac and Biggie kind of how he did with AJ and Biggie and not even midway through the year, he puts Biggie at the five, lets Vince go back to the four and sure. Biggie player of the year or whatnot. They win the big 10 and, I think if he would have done that the year before, we had that. I mean, I, we had the similar success, but I think um, the flow of the offense would, would have been better. Because I think Vince Edwards was um, Vince was so good; it was really, really good. And I think Jamerson Battle 
went through this this past season is that when you have a four man and they have the advantage against other four men, like Vince could beat any other four man off of the dribble, get to a shot, get whatever bucket he wanted, but he could also guard them. But when you switch from the four to the three, it's a different animal. I mean, you're sure. being guarded by a quicker guy. You're not able to get around guys if you don't have that quickness. Defensively, you're asked up for more. And I think um, the 15, 16 year, I don't know. I think Vince struggled with that. I struggle with going to more of a spot of shooter role, not really having driving lanes. But I would say on paper we were better, but I think the team flowed better. And then you had John Noctius. I think John Noctius was um, one of the better point guards that Payne has had and no one really mentions. Sure. No, interesting. Interesting. I, you know, as a Wisconsin guy, I kind of think of uh, Nigel Hayes when he mentioned that, you know, going from the four mm-hmm. to the three, having some struggles. I, yeah, I didn't really exactly. just think about that, like with, with just a quicker defender guarding you versus having. Yeah, Nigel was that way, too, because I, I remember Nigel. I mean, Nigel would go around our four man and then I check him and then I'm a guard. So, I mean, you do just that natural. If you're not if you're a, a stretch four or maybe a slower non-athletic three that's kind of taller you kind of you're in that mode and you have that advantage that's why i'm excited for jameson battle this year i see at ohio state him getting back to that four row because that's really when he has an advantage so i think um from 15 to 16 that was a big difference maker then obviously i mean you go with the expectations now we're now we're teams are hunting us compared to when we are hunting others so i think um that shifts as well Interesting, interesting, and um, obviously you're one of the, the the great defenders in recent memory and recent Big Ten memory. Um, and 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 you would be tasked with guarding the other team's best player. Who are some of your favorite matchups to to, to guard in the, the Big Ten? And the Big Ten specifically, I would say uh, D'Angelo Russell comes to mind that year. Uh, if I had to pick three, it would be D'Angelo Russell, DJ Newble, and um. I mean that year was loaded, man. I mean, yes, I could just I go. Agree. I mean, I go, I go, I could just. I mean, because you really can't. I mean, I can't get you three because it just was. Each team had a guy. Each team. I mean, yeah. Ohio State, D'Angelo Russell. I mean, DJ Nubu at Penn State. I mean, you had Melo Trimble at Maryland. You had, I mean, Frank Kaminsky. Des Wells that year. Yeah, yeah, Des Wells that year. Yeah. You had um, Teran Teran Petway and Ravante Rice. I mean, a lot of good high- two guards. Austin and Andre Hollins at Minnesota. I mean, Denzel Valentine was at Michigan State. Karis LeVert was at Michigan. James Blackman and Yogi Ferrell at IU. I mean, it just was, you could not, you could not take a night off. Only, I mean, maybe Rutgers. Maybe Rutgers was a team that was down. I mean, their point guard was pretty good. I forget his name. I don't know why. Was. Miles. Miles was pretty good, but... Other than Rutgers, I don't think there was a down guard in the league. So, I mean, you had every uh, – and if it wasn't a guard, I would guard a Sam Decker or I would guard a Frank Kaminsky. So, no matter who the matchup was, it was a, it was a tough out. So, I think Daniel Russell was a fun one because he ended up getting drafted two overall, obviously. So, that's always a fun one. But then um, D- Nubu was probably the toughest to guard just because um, – you just never knew what AJ you was going to get. And Isaac wasn't the best with ball screen defense. And Penn State ran the same play over and over. They would give the ball to DJ Newell. He'd come off the high ball screen. And he had a funky jump shot where he would shoot it this way. And you couldn't really get to it. And uh, he hit us for 40 and I fouled out. So that was probably <laughs> the toughest game I had defensively. Sure. And on the flip side, you know, you, you played against all these, you know, really good two guards in the Big Ten or in college basketball. Was there any of these elite guys where you kind of were like, I have this guy's number a bit. Like I, I, I can, I can put the clamps on this guy. I um, mean, I felt like that against everybody. Um, sure. I remember um, D'Angelo Russell came out and said I was a, the toughest defender he had to face, just because he was a freshman. I tried to body him a bunch and kind of put my weight on him. Sure. Um, that was a, always fun. When my favorite matchup was always James Blackman Jr. Just because um, I'm from Fort Wayne, James is from Fort Wayne. But also, we were middle school teammates. So I was in eighth grade. James was in sixth grade. We went undefeated through the year, whatnot. We played on the same AAU team. So that's always fun to not have a guy just from your hometown, but a guy you used to play with on the floor. Yeah. That matchup was always good. But, I mean, I would say 
I was and and two, I, I had James's number because I would try to little bro him in a sense. I would try to rough him up a little bit, but sure. yeah, those those two, those two, and then also the battles that I would have with DJ Nubu were pretty fun too. He get me, I get home. It just I remember because that season they got us. I think we were at Penn State when I found out, and in the Big Ten tournament, we knocked those dudes out. So. Those were fun. And Rayvante Rice and Teran Petway, they talked a whole lot of trash. So those are always good, too. Good deal. And um, one of my last Purdue questions before we talk some current Big Ten hoops is, uh, do you have any good Matt Painter stories, any favorite Matt Painter stories from your time at Purdue? No, I mean, I don't really got a lot of funny stories that you could, like, I guess, share in a sense. But uh, just a lot of like, just like paint was just such a straight shooter. Whereas though the stories that I remember were more about life, were more about like, he would say random stuff. When you're 30, try to park downtown and you go understand. He would say, try to park downtown Chicago. You understand how hard, how hard you have to work to succeed. Stuff like that. Just little, sure. little things like little messages and little memos. Like there's little things that I write in my house that I, I took from Purdue or, if you like a, a a message that I always will share to kids or share to anybody is if you don't like the hole you're in, stop digging. So he would always have these little these little sayings he would say or that would really hit home, especially later in life. But Peyton was a uh, what you see is what you get. And like I said, sure. I committed I committed as a freshman. So you gotta think I started being recruited a year earlier than that. So He's been consistent. He's been the same. He's been sarcastic. He's been humorous the whole time. And you don't see that with a lot of people. I mean, he um, just a couple of years ago, he come down to New Orleans for my wedding. He's walking Bourbon Street. He's just a regular dude. And he's just like hanging. You, you, he, if you meet Paint, you hang out with him, and you didn't know he was Purdue men's basketball coach, you would just think he was a cool dude that liked baseball. So um, it's always good with him. Very cool. And – uh Last question here before we get into uh, some Big Ten hoops is, how have you grown since your time in college? What's changed most about you since you were 22 years old? I've had more kids. So um, <laughs> I left Purdue with one kid, and I have three kids and a wife. Um, I guess my understanding of the, the world has changed. My understanding of uh, my community has changed in my neighborhood. Uh, so I guess I've just grown in that way, and now I'm at the point where less is more, and whatever I could do to give back to to push the next person to give them opportunities I had, uh, I I try to do it. So I guess um, where I've grown most would be just um, having the mindset to do more for others, and I think because um, for me, like I tell you right now, I committed to Purdue as a freshman, so. I had a lot of basketball experiences that that were great, even just life experiences that a lot of kids may not have or a lot of adults may not have. So for me, it's about giving as many kids the opportunities through basketball or not through basketball as I, as, as I can. Because also I understand that at 14, I had opportunities because I was 6'3 with a mustache and I could dunk. And there's kids right now that are 13, 14, that, that, that are 5'2 and unathletic, but they still need opportunities to do things. And they may still love basketball, but they may not be the player. But it's people like yourself, people like me, that can show them different avenues into basketball, like media or like being a video coordinator or like being a trainer or per, player personnel to where they can really find something they love and can find something they can have goals and passions for. So mine is all about, at this point in my life, and I know I'm saying it's like I'm old, but it's just about giving back and trying to find as many as many people I can help as I can. Oh, that's awesome. That's very cool. And um, you're, you're obviously a college basketball analyst now. Was that always what you wanted to do once your playing career was over? Um, no, I can't even say that because um, it's something I, I guess I wanted to do. It's one of the things you just don't know how you go about doing it. And I spent a uh, – Spent a couple of years trying to get involved in it, talked to Coach Painter about it, talked to Robbie Hummel about it. And it's something that, by the grace of God, just came about. Um, and I haven't necessarily asked how it happened. I'm not one of those guys. I don't want to find out how it happened. I just know it happened. And I got an email, and it was during COVID, and I didn't think it was going to end up happening. And then 
it just got to stay persistent. Once I got it, got the email, I just kept reaching out, kept reaching out. And then um, I got an audition and then kept reaching out, kept reaching out. And then I got a, got a, I think four dates and then four dates led to 10 dates. And then now this will be my third season. So um, something that I didn't necessarily think I will be doing, but something that I, I graduated with. The, I mean, I went to school for communications and sales and whatnot. So Something I knew I would like to do, but it's been a blessing being able to do it. Shout out to Ray Fell for coming on the show and make sure to stay tuned for part two. It should be coming out on Thursday night.